I cannot hear your good morning. I know because you are on mute, but I can see your hand. Good morning. So pleased to have you all. I completely agree with what Vaughn was saying that during these days of lockdown when uh, we do feel that we are in our house and how difficult it is to reach out to the people and when you especially have this heart to to reach out to the people with the gospel and that was something literally I was thinking for several days last few weeks and I was thinking what would be the best way to reach out to more number of people in our town uh, outside our town I feel as if I'm limited to one place and I'm not able to go to my neighbors and speak to them about Jesus uh, the, the the practices that we were having of knocking the door and giving the leaflets I, I just had this thought exactly what Vaughn was saying but I was so pleased yesterday I received an email from one of my friends from World Vision who visits our church uh, sometimes and he sent me an email and that email was giving me report how because of lockdown churches have started using this technology through zoom and youtube and facebook and all other technologies are being used and while using this technology literally the boundaries of the church has just extended and the word has been able to reach to several number of people and they were just making a report on how many people are viewing these days the messages and uh, the worship songs and it has just exponentially has gone very very high and that was such an encouragement to me that that yes even in this given condition probably Satan had thought that now I will block everything to house and no one will be able to reach to anyone but on the contrary tables have turned around and the word is reaching to several hundreds and thousands of people there are reports I mean that was given literally the numbers have been given to me I'm not able to remember those numbers because those numbers are in five figures six figures wherein people have received Jesus for first time during lockdown amazing isn't it our God is amazing he can really, really bring joy even if we are standing in the fire like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. He can come in that situation and turn around the situation for yes. his glory. And I was full of joy when I went through that report and I was thinking, Lord, this is better. At least we do not know to whom we are reaching, but you know to whom you are reaching. You know to whom you are talking. You know whose heart is being stirred and whose spirit is being stirred and who is receiving Christ. It is absolutely between the father and his children. The sources, you and I, the hands and legs of Jesus, we just want to do what he has asked us to do and rest of the things he is doing everything and that is so marvelous and I was understanding this is how it should be instead of me knowing to how many people I am reaching and then feeling proud that to this many number of people I am preaching and this many number of people have received Christ enough of that now enough of that it's only God who gets all the glory and he is literally believe me the reports when I read I was like wow this is great this is great two days back I was feeling how long are we gonna have this lockdown now it is being said that we will go into level three and again we will not be able to gather together oh no but this report just refreshed me and filled me with joy and I'm feeling like come on God let's do it let's save this whole world come on and whatever we are supposed to do we will continue doing that amen oh so I'm excited I do not know the message that we are uh, having today how many number of people are going to view that how many number of people will be touched by that I just want to believe that Holy Spirit is at work yeah. and he is working marvelously he is just using every technology every way to reach homes to reach corners of the world 
we physically probably were not able to reach to the uttermost parts of the world but praise the lord god gave wisdom to man to take this technology to the uttermost parts of the world and now he is using this same technology to take his word to the uttermost parts of the world people who were scared to go to the church or to go to any open air meeting and hear about jesus but had that desire had that thirst to hear about jesus to know about jesus they can easily access and come unto the lord and that is happening so i was presuming probably there will be billions of hidden christians by the end of lockdown Amen. billions Amen. people who will be personally submitting themselves to jesus without even their family members without even their hostel mates without even their friends and colleagues knowing they themselves submitting themselves to lord and saying yes jesus i realize i need you i need you lord please forgive my sins and make my child please make me your child and that is what i am seeing in this lockdown yes the time is for the growth time is for the harvest let's get into the word let us continue what we were saying last sunday and we had just started with this word and we were reading from deuteronomy chapter 8 and the words that i had read for you last time was verse 7 deuteronomy chapter 8 Verse 7 KJV says For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land a land of brooks of water of fountains of depths that spring out of valleys and hills Amen So dear brothers and sisters we have been seeing last two Sundays how Bible speaks about how God was explaining the israelites how the land of canaan will be the promised land will be and we know for last several months weeks and months we have been seeing that god has promised and god expects that you and i as believers need not limit ourselves or keep ourselves satisfied by knowing jesus in glimpses in small types but he wants us to reach to that land of rest he expects us to reach to that position wherein we will be able to enjoy jesus christ in his fullness not just as someone who has saved us not just as someone who has given us the spirit not just as someone who gives us the word on daily basis not just someone who gives us protection different layers of protection not just who calls us as priest not just who gives us certain principles not just who makes us part of the army but he wants us to know jesus in fullness that is the matured level of knowing christ i like the way paul says in ephesians chapter 3 verse 8 ephesians chapter 3 verse 8 reads unto me who am less than the least of all saints in this grace given that i should preach among the gentiles this is the part that i love the most the unsearchable riches of christ Paul was appointed being he calls himself the least of the saints but he says the grace has been given to me that i can preach among the gentiles that is you and me the unsearchable riches of christ the unsearchable riches and the things that we are seeing that is that is the part you know my dear brothers and sisters that god wants you and i as believers to know about jesus the riches that are in our jesus christ 
we cannot be satisfied by knowing Jesus superficially. But we need to know Jesus deep, wide, high. There are unsearchable riches. The more we go into the word, the more we dive into the love of Jesus. Like Sami says, the deep calleth the deep. The more deep we would like to go. And the more deep we go, the more richness of Jesus we can experience. We can know. And that is something we are called for. When Paul says that he has been chosen by grace to preach that, now it's our time. It's your time. It's my time. Not only to know those riches, not only to, to dig those diamonds and those valuable stones, have them, but also distribute them to the world. The richness that is found in Jesus Christ. And how good, you know, in Old Testament, Jesus shows himself several times in verses this is one of the one of the ways to know jesus the richness of jesus so last time we had seen about the good land that's how god refers to this land good land and he is talking about jesus and he goes on to explain how good this land is and the first thing that we had seen under this goodness was this is spacious you remember the word large good and large mm -hmm. our jesus is large he can cover everything and anything that you ask the the more risk you take the the more faith you extend the more you are able to know jesus one who has experienced jesus in a larger way will be able to speak about him in volumes. The second thing we had seen was he is ascending in the hills. He is the one who is ascended, surrounded by sea, which represents the death, but he is ascended one. That was something that we had seen last time. And then today, we are seeing this verse which says, For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. Whenever this good land comes, oh, I feel excited. I am reading Deuteronomy and Leviticus and these books. And the moment it speaks about good land, I just stop there and I feel like, oh, there is something about Jesus. There is something about Jesus. Some richness about Jesus is coming up. And he goes on to say, a land of brooks of water. We are talking about springs of fountains and depths. And then he says that spring out of valleys and hills. So I'm dividing this part, this verse into two parts. One type of water, spring, fountain and depth and sprints and then second part we will see about valleys and hills and I was telling you about the well last time if you can come with me into John chapter 4 I hope probably most of you will remember this verse John chapter 4 I'm reading verse 14 John chapter 4 I'm reading verse 14 1 4 14 says but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life did you get the word well and that's what I was talking last time he's speaking about his spirit when he was speaking to lady from Samaria and he's telling her 
that whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I give him shall be in him like a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And here in Deuteronomy, he tells us the three stages. First, it starts with the spring. Spring is a life source from where continuously the water will be oozing. The water will be coming. That's the spring that we have in the well. And as this water gets collected, the collected water is the depths and the fountain. When this water overflows outside the well, it starts flowing in the form of streams in all the directions. And that is something that reaches in different farms and civilizations and, and fetches the need of the people. But it starts from this spring. My dear brothers and sisters, this is what this word is trying to teach us. That you and I, when we are thirsty, when we are hungry for the Lord, when we want to know him more for different reasons, maybe when we are in pain, when we are in trouble, when we are distressed, when we are depressed, when we are confused or when we are happy, when we are joyful and we are searching the Lord and we, when we are hungry for the Lord, the Spirit of God starts giving us small revelations. He starts speaking to us from his word. He starts speaking to us through his whispered words. Small whispering words that comes in. But these words, they do not stop there. The words that we read from the word, they do not stop there. Although we read one single paragraph, but that paragraph keeps, up, keeps on talking to us throughout the day. Sometimes throughout the week. Sometimes when we hear some message, sometimes when we hear some song, it just settles down, deposits in depth of our heart and it starts speaking to us throughout the day, throughout the week, sometimes for several months. And while speaking, we, while that word is speaking to us, we come across different references in the Bible. We come across different talks with people. We come across different messages from videos or other speakers. We come across different songs which we feel is related to what we had heard. And that is so cool, you know. These experiences are so joyful. We just get excited. Oh yes, this is what I was thinking about. Oh yes, this is what Jesus spoke to me this morning. Oh, during my devotion, this was the word that was so, so touching to me. And I see this song is absolutely in line with that. I hear this man speaking absolutely in line with that. Oh, that is the spring that is just flowing. Flowing and it just keeps on growing. Because that's how Jesus works. That's how his spirit works. When we touch Christ, Christ doesn't limit himself to that. He starts reveling one after other, one layer after another. He just starts opening up and he keeps on filling us. But when? When we are hungry. When we are thirsty for him. When we really seek him, <sighs> ask and you shall be given. Ask and you shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. For what? For the love of Jesus. When we have that, see, asking some physical thing, if we take this word in reference to physical things, we will limit Jesus to very small things. But when we seek Jesus himself, Lord, I know, I want to know you. And I strongly believe on this sentence. And therefore, I use this sentence several times. The more we know Jesus, believe me, the more we will love him. The more we know Jesus, the more we will love him. But when we will know him, unless we have that thirst, unless we have that thirst. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, God is so loving. Jesus is so loving. His spirit is so loving. He will not only give us 
this spring in the form of the knowledge. But he will give us this spring in the form of spring of patience. Sometimes spring of love. Sometimes spring of endurance. And that will get collected in the form of spring of spring of uh, 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 perseverance. Spring of wisdom. It, it will get collected in the form of depths and fountain of knowledge. Depth and fountain of wisdom. And it will stream out to people with the, with the stream of mercy. With the stream, stream of ministry. With the stream of loveliness, goodness to the people. It will just take different forms the more we know Jesus the more we seek Jesus the more we receive from Jesus the more he will start blessing to the people in different ways I, I sometimes feel instead of asking Jesus fill me with your power fill me with your power it is better to ask him fill me with yourself fill me with yourself because if we have jesus we have everything we have everything and what is to be used in what condition holy spirit knows better when he should use the gift of wisdom, when he should use the gift of understanding, when he should use the gift of miracle, when he should use the gift of prophecy. He knows we do not have to pick something and use that. If we have Jesus, he will use, he will allow the streams of everlasting life to flow through us. We will be the source of everlasting life to our colleagues. To our relatives, to our friends. Why? Just because we are drenched. This sponge is drenched with Jesus. Knowing Jesus as spring. And then getting filled like fountain. And then flowing to other people. Unknowingly. You know, and that is the best part. That is the best part. Knowingly speaking about Jesus to someone may create some frustration if other person doesn't hear or doesn't accept Jesus. We may feel frustrated. But when it goes unknowingly, when spirit uses us unknowingly, and then afterwards we get to know, you know, that day you spoke this, and then I realized I should come to Jesus. Ah, that is better. Because if I, I don't know about you, but this is something I can tell you about myself. Every time I have tried to do the things in my wisdom or in my knowledge, I have created mess. But every time God directed, he guided, it was always beautiful. But I will never know immediately. I will always know afterwards. And then I will think, oh, really? Wow, God, you are great. That's how he works. That's how he works. <laughs> when I was 12 years old and I was asked to preach in the church, my pastor was having different strategy of training the young ones, the so-called young ones. And his strategy was he will never ever let us know who will be asked to preach on which Sunday. So after the worship, he will just say, okay, we are going to read such and such psalm. And the moment you read the psalm, he will call you. And he would say, Avish, okay, now preach on this. And I'd be like, oof. What, what do I read? What do I say? And you are in front of everyone. And you just had to speak something. And I would feel like, I, how do I say? What do I say? It was so tough. Believe me, it was so hard. And I was always during, while, while speaking, I would always think, pastor should have at least told me on Saturday. I would have at least gone through this psalm and see what, he, what the psalm want, psalmist want to speak. But no. And I would always feel like, 
How can you preach? How can you preach? But now when I go through all the experiences of last two decades now, oh, it sounds so old. No, no, no. Last few years. <laughs> if, if I remember last few years, now I realize that the Spirit of God who gives that spring with experiences you have that fountain and depth and then it starts flowing it starts flowing and you will never finish off with speaking about Jesus because that spring is life spring you cannot finish speaking about this book in this life not possible you keep on speaking, speaking, speaking. The more, this is my experience, the more I speak, if God has given me something, the day I speak, I, next time I read, I get something new. Till the time I do not speak about that revelation, I will not be able to receive the new one. Now today when I am speaking about this verse to you, I am sure in this week I will get something new. And that will just keep on flowing and flowing and flowing. And next time we meet again, we will, I will keep on speaking. The stream will never stop. He is alive. Let us go to that spring. Let us keep that spring alive. Let us keep touching that spring. Jesus. He will release you can contain as depth and fountain. And there will be a moment when it will start overflowing. I like one of the speaker when he said, whenever God gives you a message, he will surely give you audience. He will surely give you audience. So do not worry when God speaks to you, he will provide audience in front of you. And that is so cool. That is so, so neat. And this is the first part. And let us come to the second part. He goes on to say that spring out of valleys and hills. Valleys and hills. What are these valleys and hills? Okay. Let me help you. Come to 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6. And we are gonna see from 8 to 10. Second Corinthians 6. I'm reading from 8 to 10. It says by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Who is this? This is Paul speaking to Corinthians. Can you see, once again, I'm trying to help you. Can you see the valleys and hills in these verses? All the negative verses that you see over here in this passage are the valleys. And all the positive words are the hills. That is the life that Paul was leading. Can you see the valleys? See from 8 to 10. The dishonor, the evil report, the deceivers. The unknown, being chastened, sorrowful, poor, having nothing. What are they? They speak of the valleys in the life of Paul. And what are the hills? Because we read over here, out of valleys and hills. So what are the hills? He speaks about the hills by saying, good report. True people, well known, being well known, famous alive, not being killed, always rejoicing, making many rich, possessing all the things in Lord. Those are the hills. So 
these valleys and these hills are the experiences that you and I go through. And remember, unless there are valleys and there are hills, the water cannot flow. The, the, the knowledge, the wisdom, the, 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 the richness of Jesus that you and I receive by touching him, it cannot flow unless we have valleys and hills in our life. And what are the valleys and hills for us? Valleys are the negative situations, the problems, the struggles that you and I have in our life. The sickness, the issues that we go through. These are the valleys, but there are moments of hills. There are moments of joy. There are moments of success. There are moments of overcoming. Those situations, they together allow the love of Jesus, the, the information, the knowledge, the wisdom of Jesus to flow to other people, to the world. See how it is put. He says, spring out of valleys and then the hills. Remember the first word he has used is the valleys. Unless we are in the valley, we cannot reach to the people. The world is in valley. People are in, people are in vulnerable situation. People are in pain. People are in question mark. People are in doubt. People are seeking someone who can speak about peace. People are seeking someone who can speak about healing. People are seeking someone who can, who can give them hope. We need to reach to them. Where are they? They are in the valley. They are in the valley. So we need to be in the valley. And the one who is in the valley will be able to comprehend, understand what the other person is going through. Going through valley is not a curse. Going through valley is not a curse. It is a moment to reach out to someone else who is in the valley, who is in the pain. You are in that situation so that you can touch someone's life. You can speak in someone's life. Someone is there waiting and seeking the Lord and through whom he will see God. It is through you. It is through me. When we are in the valley, we are able to speak that word of life to other person who is in the valley. We need to be in the valley at times my dear brothers and sisters valley is not curse this world is in the valley we will have to go in the valley he says this water flows in the valley when we are in pain when we are in struggle, the hope that we have enables us to stand strong. But what about other person who doesn't have that hope, but he is in similar situation? We can share that hope with him. We can share that peace with him. We can share that love with him and say, it's okay. But hello, I have someone whom I can share it with you and you will receive same hope and he is Jesus. He is Jesus. Then he goes on to say, and hills. So true. The hope, the love, the joy of Jesus comes from the hills. There is on the hill, every river starts flowing. The birth of a river is from the hill. You need to go to the hill. If you search him, he will be there. The spring is there. The source, the starting point is there. You need to reach out to the hill. I, I do not know about New Zealand rivers, but I can speak about Indian rivers. I know most of the rivers in India, they take birth from Himalayas. We have lots of glaciers over there from where several huge, big rivers, they start from there and they end either in Bay of Bengal or Indian Ocean. Huge rivers, big rivers, Ganges and Brahmaputra and 
several other rivers. They start from those glaciers. We, where are these glaciers? In the hill. In the high mountain. If you want to search Jesus, you need to go in the private place. In the private place. If you can come with me in Philippians chapter 4, please. Philippians chapter 4. I'm reading verse 11 and 12. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12 says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. What is the word? I have learned. In whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Allow me to read 13th verse also because it's so, so strong and powerful. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. When I am in the valley, I am, I am learning. I am taught. That's how he says, I have learned. With experience, we need to learn. What do we need to learn? How to be abased. I know, I know how to be abound. And how to be full and to be hungry, abound and suffer. And from where do we learn this? We learn this from Christ. By going through valleys, we, we learn this from Christ. And this Christ, when we move, when we search for the source, the source is hidden over there. We need to reach out to these hills. We need to reach out to these hills. My dear brothers and sisters, our life needs to be full of valleys and hills. The more valleys and hills will be there, the more water will be able to flow. And when water flows, that will be available for civilizations, for the world. I cannot say that I would like to be in a plain area. My dear brothers and sisters, we will not be available to anyone. We need to receive the richness. When the river flows from the hill, it carries all the nutrients and all the fertile soil from the mountains and brings it to the valley. And therefore the valley becomes fertile. It's the soil that river is bringing and therefore you will find most of the civilizations getting settled down along the rivers. Just for your information, the first civilization in India was along the river of Indus, Indus river and therefore this name India. The civilization which was along the Indus river, this civilization was later on called India. Many civilizations, today this civilization that is around us is seeking that nutrient fertile soil which comes from that hill. The hill that is nothing but, that is nothing but resurrected Jesus. That is nothing but resurrected Jesus. The valleys, they speak about the cross of Jesus, but the hills, they speak about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have the cross, we go through the cross, but with hope and with that confidence that on the third day, my Jesus rose back. So I have that resurrection. It is the resurrection that enables me to bear the cross. I need to keep my eyes focused on that resurrection and that will enable me to bear the cross. The valleys and the hills. My dear brothers and sisters, we need to have this water. Go deeper and deeper. 
as deep as possible. Extract, inquire, ask. Let our prayer be, I want to know, in, know you in a newer way. In a newer way, Lord. And he is generous. He is generous. You know, in the book of Ephesians, it is said, draw near God and he will draw near you. The more you have Jesus in you, you will have everything. Everything. One that we need is Jesus and Jesus alone. Next time when we meet, we will see other riches found in Christ, which are given in next verses, verse 8, verse 9 of same chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Okay? But for today, can we just close our eyes before going into communion? Let us close our eyes and just pray for him. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. And Lord, this morning, we once again cry out to you and pray that you will fill us with yourself. We do not need anything else, Lord. We do not need anything else, for we understand now that in you we receive all fullness. We receive everything in you, Lord. You are everything for us. So, Lord, we want you more. And we believe when we have you more and more and more, naturally, everything else will be added unto, you, unto us. Holy Spirit, the word says that you will lead us to Jesus. You will remind us the words of Jesus. You will help us to pray. So we come unto you and we pray. Reveal us Jesus. Allow us to know the richness, unsearchable richness of Jesus Christ. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now, if you are ready with the, the bread and wine or juice, my family is ready here and we are ready with the bread and juice. Just before going into this, may I take this opportunity to remind you that this bread represents the body of Jesus. The body that was broken for you and for me. And the breaking of his body has healed our bodies. Has allowed us to become God's children. The wine, the juice that we have, it represents the blood of Jesus that was shed for you and for me. And this blood of Jesus which was shed on the cross has actually cleansed us from all our sins. He cleansed us, he washed us and made us as white as snow. Even today, when anyone calls unto him, his blood is faithful to cleanse our sins. Yes, he is. Let us take this moment to remember the cross of Jesus. The cross that he bore for you and for me, my dear brother. The cross because of which we have received the righteousness of God. The same cross on which we are died. We are with Jesus on that cross and we are no more who we used to be. But we are new creature in him. 
the cup of wine when Jesus gave that to his disciples he said this is the sign of new covenant new covenant for you and for me when we drink this we not only receive that new covenant but we also remember his cross and we testify to the world that we believe that Jesus died for us and he rose on third day for us and he is coming soon he is coming soon on the day he was betrayed he took the bread broke prayed and gave it to his disciples saying this is my body and today when you receive this emblem receive it as you are receiving Jesus himself and after that he took the cup gave thanks to the father and gave it to the disciples saying this is my blood a sign of new covenant for you and for you do this in remembrance of me said Jesus so let us do this in remembrance of Jesus and nothing else in remembrance of Jesus Shall we have it together? Shall we just close our eyes and pray once more? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us. We not only remember that, but we want to confess that we stand as testimony to the world for the hope that you gave us, for the everlasting life that you gave us, Father. So every opportunity that you provide Lord, we, we want to stand as testimony in every opportunity for our brothers and sisters outside in the world. Lord, we want to stand as hope for them. We want to stand as source of peace for them. We want to stand as word for them, Lord. So that they will be able to receive what we have received in you, Lord. And we specially pray for our relatives who do not know you our friends and colleagues who do not know you, who do not know or have tasted your love, we pray for them earnestly, Father, and we pray that there will be a time when they will be able to know you and receive you and receive the joy that we have received, Lord. We pray for our neighbors who have not tasted you, who have not known you, Lord, we pray in your grace, let they be able to receive you, Father. We pray for people in other countries who are going through pain. Who are going through pain because they are, they are losing their loved ones, Father. And most of them are questioning what is the answer. Heavenly Father, in your grace, Lord, let they be able to see you. Let them be able to see you and see the love that you have for everyone. For your word says you do not want even one single soul to be destroyed. Lord, let your peace, let your peace come, Father. We pray for our dear brothers and sisters in our congregation, Lord, if there is anyone who is sick, let they be healed in your mighty name, Father. In the name of Jesus, they be healed. We speak healing for them. If there is someone who is going through depression or any emotional issue, Holy Spirit, whisper your word of peace to them. Whisper your word of counsel to them, Lord. 
Let they be strengthened, O oh Father. Lord, I pray for people who have lost their jobs. Father, open new door for them, O oh Lord. Open new door. We pray for all dear brothers and sisters who are in essential work services. Putting themselves into risk. Father, we thank you for the faith. We thank you for the strength that they have in you, Lord. They are being able to serve and minister to other people, O oh Lord. Strengthen them, Father God. Strengthen them, O oh Lord. Protect them and help their families as well, O oh Lord. We thank you for your grace, Jesus. We pray for every single child. Lord, probably they may not be able to understand what is going on in the world. But we pray, Father, that your spirit will speak to them. And in a new way, they will be able to receive the unsearchable riches of you, Jesus Christ. They will be strengthened emotionally. They will be able to see you in a new way. In a better way than we see you Lord. Have mercy Father. We remember our elders. We remember our deacons. We remember all the elderlies of the families. Lord let your grace be over everyone. We thank you once again for this opportunity that we could fulfill your righteousness. We could remember your cross. We glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you.